All right, go ahead and read. Go stand face your loser. Open up and read. Yes, sir. If uh, we can ask everyone to stand and face Jerusalem, we're going to ask our brothers and sisters to uh, our brothers to uncover their heads and our sisters to cover their heads as we approach the Father. The reading is coming from Psalms 119, verse 74. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me, because I hope in thy word. I know, o Lord, that thy judgments are right. And in thy faithfulness, and in thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. Let I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort according to thy word unto thy servant, and let thy tender mercies come on to me that I may live. For my for thy law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed that they that deal perversely with me without a cause, but I will meditate in thy precepts. And let those that fear thee turn unto me and those that have known thy testimonies. And let my heart be sound in thy statutes that I not that I be not ashamed. I read Psalms 119, 74 through 80. May the Lord have a blessing and a to the reading and the doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And now for our opening prayer, we God to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the mighty God of Israel, we come for you in this Sabbath day, Lord, in the course of your law, statutes, and commandments, Lord. We pray that the message go forth to the edifying of your people, to the edifying of those that you call to your salvation, Lord, to those that you've given a second birth, Lord, and those that you call to your word on this your Sabbath day, Lord. These are the blessings we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Let's get the Lord a hand. Praise God for the understanding of it. And today we continue in our series, False Prophets, the series, as you can clearly see there. Uh, this series is called False Prophets, the series. And we have a guest reader, a guest uh, reader from the Commonwealth of Israel, uh, of the sounds of many waters, our brother Je Joe. How you doing, brother Joe? Shalom, Israelite. Shalom. Amen. Hey, 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 Shalom, everyone. Hey, Amen. Let me, uh, let me stop sharing right quick just for a moment, because, uh, 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 hold on. Yeah, because uh, this is my brother from another mother. And uh, we've been going this thing a while, man. And uh, I just want to go this route for a short, quick second because me and his brother, uh, we've been, uh, we got, got a lot of knowledge together in this book, lots of knowledge. And the Lord has taken us to the point of having different ministries, yet we got the same father. And we stand here, the book says, let every matter be satisfied by two or more witnesses. So in today's lesson, uh, we are standing in the mind about two more witnesses, y'all. And my brother Joe, he ain't a yes man. I'm going to tell y'all right now, me and brother Joe don't agree on every little thing. Nor do we agree with what everything I say. But we show respect this book. No doubt. And every ministry that respect this book, them my brother. I don't care. We don't care what color you is. Uh, uh, your creed or whatever, whatever, whatever nationality you are, it don't matter. You respect this book, you my brother. That's what Jesus said. Then he saw whosoever would do the will of my father, which is in heaven. Right. Mm -hmm. The same as my brother, mm -hmm. mother and sister. So getting into this series, y'all, I want to, you know, share this and we're going to be going through some things here that a lot of brothers uh, you know, I've been on the battlefield a long time. And my brother, he's been there too, right beside me. So uh, this series is it's called the False Prophets, the series. And today's portion is entitled 
It's part two. I started to go into a part two of last week, but I saw so much false doctrine, y'all, that we got to address. Because I wanted to do something different with this series. I've mentioned uh, about false doctrine and when we did the leavening agents, but I didn't go in depth and talk about them nor point out who's got what. But on this series, a new series that I've never done before and been a long time coming. Today, we're going to show you the false prophets and teachers of the Sabbath day, y'all. Oh, my goodness. And their doctrines. Amen. Because too long, too many times, you see people fixated on uh, the Sunday preacher. And it's as if, wait a minute, what about the false prophets and teachers on the Sabbath day? We cannot be partial. We cannot have respect to a person. The book tells us that if we do so, we commit and sin. And as my brother and I, we ain't never been about committing sin. We ain't never about promoting sin. Heck, me and Brother Joe, we bumped heads on, went, went, no, left the table, came back uh, four months later. Hey, bro. <laughs> oh, he come back to me, Jacob. I'm like, hey, so, so we understand, you know, nobody's got it all right and all perfect and all of that. True that. We get it. But what's going to be unveiled in this series today, we're going to see videos. And we're going to listen, y'all. And it's entitled the false prophets and their false teachers and the false teachers of the Sabbath day. This is part one. So I started to try to do this in one setting, but after me and Brother Joe kind of, after the Lord hit my mind with all the things, I ran it past him. He's like, hey man, we can't just sit in this in on one setting, brother. When it comes to the false prophets of the Sabbath day. Yep. And in one setting, y'all. So we're going to deal with, I have right there, Jesus, what Jesus said, as we quote from last week, beware the false prophets. And he spoke, he spoke of that in Matthew 7, verse 15 through 21, which come to you in sheep's clothes, but inwardly that raving wolves, you shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or corrupt? Or, or, or so is every good tree bringing forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringing forth evil fruit and a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So we're going to be looking at the fruits of these false prophets of the Sabbath day. Amen. Straight up. And every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. That's like a fire eighth day action. Flat out. That's how important this is, y'all. He said, you ain't bringing forth good fruit. You had it for the lake. Mm. So now, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. So now, because we're addressing the Sabbath day, um, just to rehash what I did last week, we exposed the fruits, spiritually speaking, of the arrogance and the self-credit statements that are contrary to the Holy Ghost. We showed you how sorcery and bitch would be witching the people. We talked about how they, these false prophets cause God's people to err. That's why the Lord said, man, do two parts of this. Mm. How they are partial and how they disregard or willfully ignore the truth. Ignore the truth that breaks off their partial doctrine. They do violence to the law or to the word of God. We're going to hear it and see. Mm. They excuse, they exercise whether the handling of the word deceitfully or craftily. They seduce the people, pandering to their carnal ambitions, and they hide their true intentions. That's what we dealt with in part one. But today we are exposing the false prophets of the Sabbath day and their doctrines, but they were false prophets. Look at 2 Peter. We're going to go there first, y'all. As you can see right there, but they were false prophets. Also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who probably shall bring in damnable hero sites, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. We're gonna hear this. We reading it, and we're gonna actually hear. I have video footage that they put on that's gonna actually show that's exactly what they're doing. And I want to point something out because it shocked me about mm, maybe 20, I said 2009. 
Mm -hmm. And it came to my mind. Peter, when Peter wrote this, there was no such thing as a Sunday Christian. Mm -hmm. What did Joe, what that Sunday Christian when, when Peter? No, Peter, sir. No, sir. That book no. is way older than any of our, this, that book is older than that the translated slave trade. Yes, sir. Exactly. Come on, move. And it happened. Peter wrote this before 321 AD. And yeah. you always hear the, the Sabbath day preacher say, so you ever come to team, change the Sabbath day. When? 321 AD. Older than that. So when he said false prophets and false teachers, we got to start with the Sabbath day, brothers and sisters. Man, that's, that's right. A, that's exactly who Peter is talking about. Yeah. And then Titus 1 and 16 right there. Mm -hmm. They profess that they know God, but in worse they deny him being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. We're talking about Sabbath day keepers. Don't get it wrong now. Oh, we're going to the last part of this thing, the last Sabbath of this month, we're going to deal with the preachers of the first day. That's what yeah. that's, that's, we're going to show you how crafty they are. You know, pals first, brother. If, um, okay. So now, just look at the history of the Sabbath day keepers on this side. Since 70 AD, since the translating the slave trade, these are the Sabbath day keepers. This is talking about Sabbath day keepers. Ain't none of these men that's right there Sunday keepers. And they have been known for some heinous things, y'all. And in particular, uh, uh, these men right here are known Sabbath day keepers. Now, next up. Now, this is what we're going to narrow down because there's so much false doctrine out there. We're going to address three main ministries, three big houses that dominate, that predominate the landscape. You got IUIC, you got US, UPK, and you got IOG. Them are three big houses we're going to address in this part one, y'all. And we are going for the core of Bible Christianity. The Christians, we ain't talking about them today, y'all. That, uh-uh. But you're going to hear some of them in these videos talking about those Christians. Now, I got to say this with IUIC. I had an a encouragement with them back in 2015 in Las Vegas on film. They are very aggressive. As you can see right there, he called out T.D. Jakes. He called out uh, uh, Jennings. He even put names on there talking about lying, boring theology. I mean, that right. man, he, he had what's called uh, 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 pastor's uh, shout outs. So he's very <laughs> aggressive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's very aggressive. Yeah. Now, I ran into a boys down in Las Vegas, in Las Vegas back in 2015, and we was on a Las Vegas strip, and they was filming me, and they had never read across Bible Christians. Mm -hmm. And I've been waiting for that film to come up ever since then. Because they were filming me, they were showing versus Jehovah Witness, versus the Christian, versus this pastor, that pastor. I'm like, why didn't y'all put uh, the Bible Christians on there? Right. But you ain't ran into one of us. So we dealing with these three ministries now. Off the top, we want to deal with the guest name kids of the Saturday, y'all. Uh -oh. so right there, first John 2 and 22. That's that, you know, that sets it up and that closes the map. This is uh who is a liar, but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ, he is an antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. Now, before I got saved from the Sunday Christian pop, I had only knew Jesus. Amen. But when I got saved over into the Sabbath day, watch this, y'all. I got hit with all these names. Wow. I'm like, whoa. Yay. Who's the Hobbit Chum Chi and Chat Chi and Jack? Who's Joshua? 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 Oh, brother, see what no letter Jerry. Back then, you know, the letter J is only 400 years old. I'm like, why? Really? So, you deny Jesus is the Christ, you the false prophet. <laughs> How many different, what is that, 30, 49, 
40, 30 names, 39? 39. 39 names. How many Bibles do we have that King James printed? One. Well, okay. All right, so I don't know where they're getting all these other names from because this book is sealed in the name of Jesus, bro. And this is only on the Sabbath day. It's, a, it, it's staggering. Right. And like it says right there, Isaiah 56 and 6, therefore my people shall know my name. Yeah. Therefore, I said they know in that day that I am he that does speak. Mm. Behold, it is I. We know Jesus. Right there. Look like a lot of Hebrew Israelites don't know Jesus. Don't know his name. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of confusion, y'all. So I just want to get that out the, off the top. We are professed to Jesus because his book professed to Jesus. And he told us we shall dwell therein from generation to generation forever and ever. So. It ain't about language, but when you start coming up with your own sacred name, right. false prophets of the Sabbath day, y'all, flat out. Can't add two scripts. Can't add. So now we're going to go to the big kahuna on the table, y'all, flat out. Now, as I stated earlier, me and Brother Joe don't agree on every little thing. We don't be haggling and straining at Nats and you know, he's going, all right, the brother got, he's looking at Jacob got. But we do know this one thing. Salvation, we don't want to call. Yeah. Trust and believe. We ain't got no issues. And that's why we even, we're part of what's called the Bible Christian Dialogue Table on Bible Christian on one accord. Because we deal with salvation, and that is the primary point. That is ground zero. That is where it got to meet. The other minds must be there in one accord with this book. So save is what we're going to start with, y'all. And we're going to move right along here. I want to, because what we're going to do now, we're going to look at the scriptures that clearly talk about saving in this book. Then we're going to hear false teachings against saving. Against it. So now here we go. Acts 16 chapter, verse 30 through 34 tells, you know, let's read that right quick. Because this young man had asked, what must he do to be saved? And I put this out on Facebook. And uh, everyone that's on the false, a false teacher couldn't answer it right. Because the question is, did he say, uh, you must wait till the end? So let's go to Acts 16 and 30. Acts only, chapter. Yeah, Acts 16 chapter, <clears throat> verse 30 through 34. Amen. Now, if you look at uh, on the right there, on the left, I actually explicitly put there what we say from by the blood of Jesus Christ Amen. and what we are saved to. Because to be saved from something, the Lord is saving you to something. It's a two-part process, y'all. He saved you from to save you to do something. Yes. That's why we're going to get to the Sunday. When we get to the Sunday part, they act like you ain't saved to do nothing. Mm. But that's that. We'll get there. We'll get there. I don't want to get ahead of myself. But read the Acts 16 chapter, verse 30 through 34. Everyone sitting up on a false teacher. The Lord has allowed me to dispose them. It's like a little litmus test. You couldn't simply answer what this the, uh, what the answer was to this question. Acts 16, verse 30 through 34. When you get it, brother, read. Acts 16, chapter, verse, Acts 16, verse 30. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must we do to be saved? Now, you got a click out there, several clicks. Oh, brother, you got to wait to the end. Ain't nobody say now. Nah. We're going to hear this. I should just shut my mouth and let it happen. But go ahead and read what, read what the answer is to this. Go ahead. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in mm. thy house. Mm. Go ahead. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. Mm -hmm. And he took them. The same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized he and all and he and all his straightway. Now hold on. Let's stop stop right here and let's go to Second Peter 
Now, 1 Peter 3 and 21. Now, did we see anything in there about waiting to the end? No. But you got false teachers out there that act like it's, it's supposed to be there. Flat out. And we're gonna let you, we're gonna let you hear him say that. Oh, yeah. First Peter 3 and 20. First Peter chapter 3, verse 20. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we're disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was in preparing. Wherein through, that is, a souls were saved by water. Now, was that literal water or spiritual water? <laughs> no. Sorry about that, y'all. So let's see what right. let's see what the next verse says. Go ahead. The light figure well unto even baptism do also <laughs> now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Oh, no wonder you didn't say wait until the end. No wonder they went and baptized him so he could be what? Saved. Because it was the answer to, of their conscience toward who? God. Wow. Flat out. Mm. I didn't twist nothing. I didn't make up nothing. The book said line upon line, precept upon precept. And a lot of these false teachers say they do that, but how come they don't do this? Amen. And believe what we, we read, what we believe. We actually stick it to the script, ain't we, y'all? Yeah. Ain't we seeing the performance of the word of God straight out? Right. So now we're going to move right along because we're going to get to these videos of the contrary speaking like this ain't even in the book, y'all. So now I want to point this out. Now, there are five stages of salvation. How the brother help bring me to the brother Isaiah help me come to this understanding about the first stage. The call. Yeah. Preparation, being called. So that's why I appreciate that, brother. Hardest working man in, in Bible business than me. Then we appreciate that, brother. Look, call, that's the first thing. You got to answer the cell phone call. Right. Once you answer the call and you listen. And you believe what you listen to and what you hear? Stage two kicks in. And I have all the scripts there. Take a screenshot, take a picture shot. Hey, stop it, freeze it, boom. Everything right there, scriptor. So we see stage one, stage two, you get saved from your past sins. You can save from being in error. You are actually converted to a new beginning. That's a change. You become a new creature. That's a, a change because you saved from that old creature. You saved from that old mindset or those old thoughts. And you enter to what's called the covenant stage. You got stage three accountability. That's what me and Joe, I think me and Joe, we kind of probably crossing over to the stage four because we got a lot of knowledge in this. What would you say, Israel? I say uh, that three, four probably is more conducive. Yeah. You yeah. Know, um, hands down. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. That's what we yeah. Accountability and because uh, trust and believe we are held accountable for being in his word. Yes, sir. Like I love how Brother Isaiah said, the same from sin, saved to the word of God. Right. Yes, man. You, got, you got babes that's in that stage two. The Lord gave you three and a half years in that, trust and believe. But then you go to stage three, accountability, elders, and then uh, the part that gets hot on the most is stage five. Even if, if even if it's even mentioned. Now you got some people that ain't even going to sleep in Jesus. But they Sabbath their keys. Mm -hmm. So now look, so now here's the error. Let's put the let's put the lie on the table. Nobody saved now, only at the end. Mm. Totally disregarding the process, the beginning process, the calling stage, the new covenant, the new creature. Totally disregard. That don't, even, that don't mean a hill of me. And it says, this perspective, what I have here, is in a perversion of the Judaic view of the future coming of the Messiah. Because mm. we know when Jesus comes back, he's going to establish his kingdom on this earth. But what they doing is, Judaism says that no savior is needed or is available 
as an intermediary. In other words, you keep the commandments, you keep the commandments, you keep the commandments, you ain't saved, you ain't, you gotta, you gotta do that. You know, as if strictly keeping the commandments is what's gonna save you. Disregard the Savior, because Jesus is our Savior. Right, that's right. So there's 613 commandments found in Leviticus and other books, and all regulated, all aspects of what Jewish life in the Ten Commandments delineate in Exodus 20. 1 through 17 in Deuteronomy 5 and 6, form a brief synopsis of the law, Mosaic law, as a Christian like to put it. According to Judaism, the Messiah, the anointed one of God, will arrive in the future and gather the Jews once more to the land of Israel. So ain't nobody say to the end, as far as they are concerned. Right. So that's why you got to do the commandments. We understand it, but Jesus came with a purpose, y'all. And we're going to look at some of those scripture, and we're going to hear stuff contrary to what you plainly read in this book. So this is the three ministries we're going to deal with. Now, I got them right there. You got right here. I'm going to bring this up because we had opposition. These teachers oppose. Look unto me and be ye saved. We're going to hear that. And then because Isaiah 45, 22 says, look up to me and be me saved. Look up to me. What? Every time I come across somebody that said they're not saved, and I show them in the scripture, they be like, all right, yes, this is in the Bible. Right. Yes, we must preach this. This is a commandment. Ain't hey, look up to me, a commandment from God. That's right. And be saved. Thank you. Not, not maybe. Right. Not be. Right. Be saved. Be saved. Right. Every time you look to him, you saved. Right. That's now. That's you because you said, and if you look at him, he's going to bring you into that covenant state. Amen. He call you to understand the accountability. Right. And then look, the way we're going to hear these guys talking, they have never read this. He said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Say it. That's what the book say. Right. That's what the script say. Yeah. We stick it to the script. We actually yeah. mean that. Brother Job is about sticking to that script. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That, that brother would hit me upside the head, and I'd hit him upside the head with what? Script. The only way we float. We don't, we call ourselves Mike said a, a Jedi is going against each other. We lock up saints. I'm like. I can't, I can't cut you. You can't cut me. So we're like, all right, Roger that. We just, it is what it is, bro. Roger that. They're going to get the rest of them. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Just like that. But look, these teachings, as you can clearly see on this program, and this is going to be the first one up. Notice what they say. Am I really saved already? Are you serious? That's Dowie. That's what Satan used in his Presentation coming to Eve. Did God really say you should not eat it up? Mm. Then you got I-U-S-P-K. Are you really saved by Christ? Wow. Yep. Then you got I-U-I-C saying the same thing. They all three of these got the same fathers. So we're going to listen to the videos of these guys. I want y'all to listen to this. And as you're listening, I'm going to run the scripts back. So, hold on. We gonna listen, y'all. We gonna listen. But this ain't about nothing personal. This is about the book. Who's standing with God? It's that who on the lower side? Right. That's what it comes down to, brothers and sisters. So we gonna listen. Now this first one up. This first one. Again, it's one furthest on the left. That's what we're checking out right here. And we're going to listen to This the bomb of Gilead, right? Right, yeah. Okay. Let me set this up. Okay. Or those who uh, say that they are saved right now, we want you to bring your scriptures and share your scriptures with us. And we're going to share these scriptures uh, that's going to show you that we are all working toward 
salvation that we are not saved, but we are working toward salvation, which is the end of the goal for us, Sister Mother. And what I do want to share with you guys is, and Mother Jane and Brother Greg are going to assist me on this. And the reason I called Brother uh, Greg on the show with me tonight, and then we reached out to Brother Jane because Sister Mother, I was not raised in the Sunday church. I was raised in the Israel of God. So when you speak on being saved, I really uh, don't understand from the perception of the Sunday uh, side of things. On now notice, y'all, he said the Sunday side. Brother, if you read the book, we coming from the book. Then we get come from Bible, y'all. Yeah. Right. We coming from book side. Flat out. That's the side we are. We on the book side. We on the book side, y'all. See it. Right. That's right. But when you under partiality and arrogance, and you got this other agenda, you ain't even looking at the source of what the book say about say. What the book say. Mm. So let's finish watch this, y'all. This is what they talk about when they being saved, because growing up believing the God, I was taught that you were working towards salvation and you were not saved until the end. It Did y'all hear that? Yeah. I'm going out this house. I came out of this house and uh trust and believe when I got hit with the scriptures that you see right there. I'm like, wait a minute. I swore to preach this book. Right. Not the doctrine of some organization. Not some organization, y'all. But this Brother said, I have, you know, I was calling, come on, man. So we're looking at a false teachings coming forth and manifesting in these brothers that clearly go against what you read. Clearly. He didn't do it to answer the same shall be saved. So I never understood when people from the Sunday church would tell me that they were saved already. So I brought brothers on here that have uh, come from those walks of life, you know, Brother Gray, coming from that walk of life, from the Sunday church, and coming to the Word, and uh, set under Sunday preachers and things, and Brother James also, who uh, came from that walk of life, and now he's teaching here the true Word of God. So these brothers are going to help me out, with, and they can give me a shed me a light on me. When people say that they are saved, uh, what do they mean? And we're going to read some of those scriptures, Brother Gray, the scriptures they use to try to justify them being saved right now. And we're going to read the scripture. We're going to show them what those scriptures are truly talking about. And it's all going to point to salvation. And so, Brother Gray, uh, Brother Jay is going to show us, according to the Bible, what saved is. But I want to read the script. I want to read the definition of what brothers always read to me. Well, are, we, are, are, are we going to open up with uh, Psalm 61? Or we did that already. We did, we did, we did that already. 61. We're open. We did that. Okay. We are open. And I want to send a shout out, Brother Will, to Pastor Johnson, Bethany Half the God, who is simulcasting this broadcast live on BHG TV. Time in and put your chats as well. And stay tuned after this lesson, Pastor Johnson will get also a short rebuttal. And also to our brother in uh, Isaiah Israel. Welcome to the show. Feel free to put those chats here, my brother. This is, we and talk indeed. To yes, we do want to address these things because sisters and brothers really told to put together the lesson. Because when I log, every day when I log onto Facebook and on social media, someone is uh, putting out there that if you are not saying that you are saved now, you are an error. But we want to qualify, we want you to qualify those things. We want you to get into the chat and qualify to us how you have already received salvation. And how y'all already received salvation. So, Brother Greg, I want to read the, the, the Western Dictionary definition of salvation. Now, before you read that, y'all, I'm putting up scriptures that clearly, such as we see right there, it says, my defense is of God. This is Psalm 7 and 10. Which save it. Right. Which save it. This is what you know, God. Which save it the upright in heart. And then even Paul. 1 Corinthians 1 18. For preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved. Hey. 
saved. Amen. Amen. It yes, is sir. the power of God. Wow. <laughs> Which are saved. Present tense. Present tense. Now, Come on, y'all. Say it. Come on. So now he's going to go to some definition in the dictionary and kind of overturn this. Scriptures like this. <laughs> and nobody say now, only you working to uh obviously we got somebody that's under a false teacher. Mm. And they false doctrine. And these are the fruits of a false teacher. Uh oh. Here we go. Say I'm gonna read this because this is what the brothers already read to me, but then we're gonna qualify according to the Bible what saved is. So the definition is the act of preserving or the state of being preserved from harm. A personal thing that is a means of. So I want to stop it right there. When it said preserve from harm, don't the book say that God put his angels and kept around them that what? Fear him. Right. Mm. Devoted, those that are devoted to his fear, he put his angels around them to encamp about them. To keep you from being in harm's way. To keep you from being in harm's way. Yes. Exactly. I almost want to read that. Can we? Go on. Yeah, yes, let's sir. read that, y'all. That's what the Psalms. Hold on, man. Joe, if you can find that verse right quick, man. I think it's Psalms 90. Hold on, man. Because I'm like, hold up. That definition right there. Cool. Whirly. But whirly, y'all. In the book. Because we are sitting here exposing false teachers and false prophets. And their doctrine, y'all. Their doctrine is you not saved. But what the book says. Uh, as well, we got to look back. We can't go by these false teachers and false preachers, y'all. So right here, his aim is encamped about them that fear him. Let me go and get this script right here, bro. Encamped. It's an encamped. If you find that before I do, Israel. I'm looking for it. Yeah, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Uh oh, wait a minute. I'm spelling Here we wrong. go. That's uh, Psalms. Hold on, hold on. Psalms 34 and 7. Hold on. Yeah, go to Psalms 34 and 7, Israel. Okay, I'm there. Read that. Okay, Psalms 34 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. The angels of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and deliver them. Yes! That's book. Yes, sir. Other scriptures say Jesus the Lord is the very present. What? Amen. Help. Amen. Can we acknowledge the Lord? Not if you sit up on a false teacher. You acknowledging his teacher and not the Bible. Like one brother told me, I like what you guys are trying to do because you guys are trying to teach the Bible, not your sins. Yes. Not your opinions, not your feelings, not your we're going to fall off. That's flesh talking. The book says the spirit is ready, but the flesh is what? Weak. Mm. But no, no, no. Let's listen to the rest of this, y'all. We got a while ago, y'all. Preserving from harm, deliverance by redemption from power of sin or from penalties ensuing from it. That's the biblical definition. Now, the Western def definition says to stop someone from being killed, injured, or destroyed, to save someone from harm. So, the word save is past tense of save. In order to be saved, you have to be saved right now, Brother Gray. Okay. In order to, to be saved, you have to be in the state of being saved right now from all harm, danger. And we're going to show you, Sister Brother, you are not safe right now from all harm and danger. Just all kinds of things can be following you. So what I want to do, Brother Gray, I want to start off and show people why we have to be recovered, redeemed in the first place. Let's go to Romans 5 and 12. Hold up. Let's go to Proverbs 29 and 25. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, 24 and 6. Proverbs 25 and 6. Stop, 24 and 6. Oh, 20, 24 and 6. Yep. Proverbs 24 and 6. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. And in the multitude of counselor, there is safety. There is safety. 
This word counsels us in our walk. Amen. Amen. Thanks, God. I mean, you know, to make kind of light of it, you save a lot of money when you come out of this heathenism, don't you? Mm -hmm. Say it. You save a lot of heartache when you stop committing adultery, right? Yeah. You, you, them, you cut them live out. You say you save yourself from a lot of danger. Because you know some people out there that will do the food pop on you for living lies and telling them lies. Right. Save a lot of marriage. Save a lot of hurt. It's a lot of saving going on when you go by the word. It's saving you from dangerous right. living. Yes. Dangerous living. Say that. Come on, y'all. Do I, I don't need to laugh. Do, do I need to elaborate on that, brother? No. No, it, it, it's called riotous living. Right. There it is. It's in Proverbs and the New Testament, brother. Yes, sir. Yep. So let's get going because we got some more videos, y'all. Go ahead. Because it's saying that we are talking about, according to the Bible, is the second death. It's not the first death. But also, because, but also too, brother Mark, <laughs> saved from what? You got to say exactly saved from what? That's right. Saved Save from what? You can be like that. Okay. Okay, so Brother Jacob Eli, if you can read that. Uh, let's, let's, let's go with Brother Jacob Eli, brother, because he put a he put a good post up. Uh because this is one of the brothers that I, I've been uh, uh talking to some with with a lot of brothers. And uh Brother Jacob Eli came to can, can you read that up, brother Brother Jane? I can't hear you, brother Jane. I can't hear you, Mike. No, no, no. Okay, can someone read that? Because I can't see that. Can someone read the, the screen and say at the bottom with Jacob Eli posted? This is uh, Jacob Eli's post. I, I, I think he said, I'm, I'm saved right now. According to this 2 Corinthians 6 and 2. Cool. Well, he let, so wait, 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 before we go there, let's go read 2 Corinthians 6 and 2. Let's read what that's saying. Well, let's, let's read this post. Let's read whatever he's posting and then we'll go there. Let's okay. see what he's saying. Okay. Well, he I'm, said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now, hold on. I want to pause it right there. Don't the book say, what got your salvation with fear and trembling? Yes, sir. Where did I get that salvation, y'all? When did you get that salvation to work out with fear and trembling? Where did you get that? Baptism. Thank you. Yeah. Are we going to sit up and call the book a lie? No. Mm -hmm. But to false teachers and false prophets with their false doctrines will. We exposing false prophets and false teachers and their doctrine. Here we go. Okay. Let's, let's go ahead and read that. That is the post in 2 Corinthians, and that is a quotation that Paul is quoting from for something that is written. We're going to see if it reads the same way also. Yeah, we got Brother Jacob, Job Israel is in the chat, and he got a couple of scriptures he's posted, but let's, let's deal with one at a time. Let's deal with the 2 Corinthians 6 and 2. But see, they didn't get to that. Uh, they didn't get to it. But let's let's move, let's move on, because I got more on that come on. I wonder why they didn't get to it. Yeah, yeah, they didn't get to yours. I'm like, wow. Uh huh. Yeah. Come on, man. What did you do? What did you post? Uh, do you remember what you posted, Joe? I, I almost want to go I posted in there. Luke. Um, I posted Luke uh, 17 and 19, and it says this. He was talking to the, um, I think it was Mary. Okay. She washed his feet with her tears. Mm -hmm. And my question was this. And he turned to her and acted. It's not Luke 19, forgive me. Um, but the scripture I po uh, posted was when she washed his feet with her hair, anointed his feet with oil and all that. Then he turned and checked the disciples. And then he turned to her and said, that faith has made you whole. Yes. And the question was this. Is that an absolute statement? Hmm. And they didn't get back to it. I asked the question, was that an absolute statement or no? I'll wait. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. If he said your faith has made, has saved you, it did that. Yes. 
You're wow. not going to say no because she was on her way to the grave if she don't repent and cry on the Lord's feet. Right. Mm. Right. Amen. Amen. We, man, look. So let me keep it moving, bro, because I'm going to go to the rest of this because they actually deal with this in this here, in this segment here. Let's go here. Okay. I'm going to go to this uh, next video. Are we saying now? That's a popular question, Brother Dre. Share some light on that, brother. Are we saying now? Let's go see what Jesus said. Let's go to Matthew 24 and take a look at what Jesus said. Now, see, right now, this is a question answered from the ILG. They always run to what Jesus was addressing the end time. Right. The context of the say they trying to keep running to every time. It's talking about at the end. Right. In the, in the last right. day. Yep. But let's read what I got right there on the board. Hebrews 7. Yeah, let me go to the steps right quick. Yeah, the, yeah, let me go to the steps right quick. Back this up right quick. See, the end is stage five, y'all. You want to make sure you sleep in Jesus. See, here's the thing. We believe in teaching the whole counsel of God. False prophets do partial out. They take a little piece and they blow up a whole big doctrine out of them. Mm. Jacob, you got to let me read the scripture. Go ahead. Go ahead, Israel. Right, watch this. It says this. It says, this is that same conversation he said. And he's talking to the, the Pharisees. He said this, Luke chapter 7, 46. He okay. said, my head... With oil, thou didst not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Yes. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Yes. For she loveth much, but to whom little is given, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven, that they said at me, with him begin to say within themselves, who is this that forgive the sins also? And on to the woman, and he said to the woman, thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. Ooh. <laughs> when did your sins get forgiven? Yes. Same. When did your sins get forgiven, brother? At the baptism. That's your faith. And it's, it made you hard. I started at the 46, but you can go a little higher because he started checking that Pharisee about his manners. Yes. He didn't show him no love. Yes. But you're going to sit up here and judge her, you know, and she giving him all the love she can or could give. But right. the thing is, not only did he forgive, he had to forgive her sins in order to save her. And he yes. told her that. Yes. So I just wanted to, that's that tidbit, man. And I asked the question, is this an absolute statement? Mm. Of course, mm. they didn't get mm. back to it. Mm. Mm. So mm. they pick and choose their fights. It is. See, they go that partiality. Right. They go that, you don't want nothing that's going to rebuke your partial doctrine. Right. So you want to stay on what supports your partiality, keeping the people blinded from, wait a minute. You want to hop on the end? Can we discuss the beginning of these things, please? Yes. Can we discuss our ministries about the forgiveness of sins and changing people's lives over from the appointment of destruction to the appointment of salvation? Can we change people's lives, y'all? Mm. Mm. Rather than walk around, well, you can fold up. No, that's how I was feeling when I was before Christ. Right. I feel the feeling I can do all things through Christ, which what strengthens me. That's right. yeah. Not this oh brother, you walk in the weakness and, and cracking this. And, well, I hope I don't know what it's she because uh, that's the roots of a false prophet and false teachings. Mm. So now let's see right here how they deal with it. They run right to the end, totally out of the context. I would say right now, it's something it, right now. We scripted right there. Paul said he was saved. We read Psalm 17, said you say, Isaiah 42. Look, I want to bring this up in Hebrews 7 and 25. Look what it says. Wherefore, he is able, talking about Jesus, he is able to save them to the uttermost what? that come unto God by him. What? When did we start coming to Jesus, y'all? Uh, are, we, are we coming to Jesus? Like, anybody? Uh, 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 
It's too late. Since it's Adam, too late. brother. Since Adam. We've been coming to Jesus since Adam. And he has saved <laughs> souls. Right. How about that? How about that? Right. A soul saved. Exactly. Yes, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, That's we right. That. We've been coming to Jesus for a long time. Yes, sir. He saved Noah in his house by water. Come on, brother. That's Come on, man. the beginning of the sins. So nobody saved now, only at the end. Let's listen to this false teaching, y'all. This to this false teaching. Mm. Started verse one, Tanzania. When you get it, started verse one, and we're going to read to five, and then we're going to skip. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things, verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown mm. down. Uh -huh. and, as, and as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So the disciples asked him, What is the sign of your coming and the end of this world? Go ahead, bro. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take ye that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive men. So they're going to say he's Christ, and they're going to deceive men. Right? Skip down. Skip down to verse 11, bro. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive men. So many false prophets going to rise and they will deceive many. Go ahead, brother. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of me shall wax cold. Mm -hmm. For he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now Jesus said, he that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. So no, you're not saved now. Did y'all hear that? So nobody's come to Jesus now. Right. Nobody has received forgiveness of sins now. See what happens when you're in partiality? See what you omit when you take things that are intended for a specific, specified time and reason because we got false prophets. You got to, I, I give you that. You got to endure these false prophets. Roger that. But you got to be saved from their doctrine first. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Is Daniel the prophet saved? Yes, he is. Okay, I just, it ain't the end. And he said, that's for the time of the end. He told him, but he gave him was for the time of the end. Yes. So, but you're going to stand in the latter day. Oh. Is he saved now? Yes, he is. Hey, some, what, what, all right, brother, I'm with you. I'm there. You know, so, I'm using something that got the, for a specific side time window, <coughs> and the Lord said his salvation is from generation to generation. To generation. That's a good question that Chosen Josie just said. Chosen Josie had asked this question. Yeah. She said, wow. So why is the IOG doing baptisms now? <laughs> <laughs> what? uh, What's the point? What's the point? If, you're so, if it ain't about, if it's only about the end, agree. We read clearly right there: those that come to Him, He saved them, and we even read it. See, it's like this ain't even in the book. By grace are ye saved through faith. That shouldn't even be in the Bible. If it's all about what's happening at the end. Man. So what are we going to do with this context of saved? See, it's in context, false teachers don't recognize context. They want to run headlong to whatever their agenda is to growl and grovel and smite what they perceive as being false without actually respecting what the book said. So that's what's wrong with the first day of They don't respect what the book said. But you gotta don't get caught up in disrespecting what they thinking, and you get and you and you disrespecting the book. Mm. Can't do both, or you a false teacher of the what Sabbath day. Uh oh, 
Flat out. That's why we look, we ain't in the business of making the first day which or the Sunday false prophet look good. Right. We're not, that's why you got people. I never forget a brother walk away when I was at Algie. He walked away from me because he showed me a scripture that I was like, that's in the Bible? Are you serious, bro? Remember Ezekiel? Remember Ezekiel, brother? He was the head of the council at that time. The brother showed me the scripture. He said, he ain't coming back. I'm like, why the brother ain't coming back to us? When he showed me that first, I felt so embarrassed and shame. I'm like, man, I thought we I thought we preached the book. And guess what we got here with? Book. And he went on to the Sunday Christian. I'm like, wow. That's the last time I'll be a part of anything that causes a false a Sunday false prophet to look good. Right. And talking about ain't nobody saved now and make a statement like ain't nobody saved. All that evidence right there. Why did the Lord saying he's able to save them now that come to him and y'all come out it's only at the end. Bye. Right. You the false teacher. They'll call them a false teacher and a false preacher. And they got the right to do it. So let's keep going. Let's hear this out right quick. Uh, we're going to go to the next ministry that does this. The same shall be saved. So you got that guy saying that. Now let's go to the ISUP. Okay, these guys right here. Oh yeah, we we eat opportunity. We ain't sitting up here gonna be hopping on because we like I said, this is only one set, y'all. Share, share all of it. You gotta make amends for your sins that you've been doing all your life. For, for, the, for the evil that you've been doing all your life. Then on the end, we'll learn the and say, well, this man, but there's a penalty from his evil ways. I'll save him in the last days. Or surely shall he save him in the last days. Or surely shall he save him in the last days. Or surely shall he save him in the last days. Or surely shall he save him in the last days. Or surely shall he save him in the last days. Or surely shall he save him in the a little bit, just a little bit. He's kind of muffled. He's talking that. No, we didn't. What did he say? Just a little bit. He's kind of muffled. He's talking that. Oh, we get it. What did he say? We get. We got the echo. Hey, mute. Mute your end. Hey, mute. Mute your end. Okay. So. We clearly see. Let me play this. For that church to God and they teaching you in that church. I'm saying so, you are really saying that's not what I want to do. The comes, then you know if you say you do not. When the COVID comes, then you know if you say it's not, when you don't die from COVID. When the when the when the uh, monkey pox get here, then you know you say it's a good get the monkey pox and die. They will get done by the Lord. When the when the when the uh, monkey pox get here, then you know you say it's a good get yeah, turn yours down on your end, Israel. Okay. Are we, are we talking about my mute? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm a, we got echoes. Yeah, turn yours down on your end, Israel. Okay. Are we, are we talking about my mute? Okay. Yeah. Oh, we got echoes. Yeah, turn yours down on your end, Israel. Okay. Are we, are we talking about my mute? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let me mute my mic out so I don't get any feedback. The scripture says, bring for fruits, meet for repentance, which means you gotta make amends for your wickedness. You gotta make amends for your sins that you've been doing all your life. Or for the for the evil that you've been doing all your life. Then only then will the Lord get down on you. They say, man, this man is a penalty for his evil ways. I'll save him in the last days. The scripture says, he ain't going to be nobody going to be saved until the end. What? 
You ain't gonna know if you're gonna be saved until the end. So that Christian God and they're teaching you in that church. I'm saved. You are already saved. We saved, brother. That's not how it works. When the destruction comes, then you know if you're saved or not. When the COVID comes, then you know if you're saved or not. When you don't die from COVID. When the when the when the uh, monkey pox get here, then you know you say hey, if you ain't get monkey pox and die for so get to get judged by the Lord. So now we see I'm live under your boot as a white slave that I should be served. That is all I want to be is a slave to the true race, the black man, the Hispanic man, mm. and the Native American. Do y'all see that? Can you hear? Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear that? Yes, sir. See, this is the hidden agenda, which drives us on to our next point, y'all, because they refuse to be born again, and they don't even acknowledge it. Let me bring this up. Make sure we, we, we do it. Because Noah was saved by water. We read that. We know the Lord our God now, here's the process, y'all. I want, I want to read this process. It's rebuked by Isaiah 33, 22, when it says, For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. He will save us. That's will save. Now, Matthew 1, 21 says, For he shall save his people from their sins. Then Titus turns around 3 and 5, and we even read it in Ephesians, we are saved by grace. It's not of us, because Jesus came and did it, hence not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the watching of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Thus takes us to Hebrews 7.25, wherefore he is able to save, also to save them that come to the uttermost that come unto him by God. See, he ever lived to make what? Intercessions for us. So as we see, that doctrine of nobody knows when they say to the end, until they get to the end, as put by ISUPK. Now let's look at this guy trying to explain, philosophy around uh, the book. Hold on. We're going to go to uh, this next one. So you can hear I-U-I-C. And we get to see the reward of let me make sure we get this. Uh, as well. Hold on. Well. Hold on. Let's start. Let's start. I'm going to sign Christ bless. I'm Captain Shemaya. With me, I have. Officer Zed and I. And welcome to another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. And today's topic, are you saved? Now, this is something that's said many times and often enough throughout the Christian church. When they feel that they've been washed in the blood of Jesus, they said they are saved. Hold it, sanctify, things of that nature. Well, I want to get the definition first of salvation. Again, notice what position they're taking it from. They're going after the first day worship, the Sunday worshipers. Of course, they need to be saved. Right. We know that because we know Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath day. You need to be saved from Emperor Constantine's day. You need to be saved from holidays to holy days of course so to sit up there and say you're saved yet you're still doing holidays no you're not but when you come to this side and you read what the book say you are saved now you have begun the process the stage of salvation as we put forth let me see if i can bring it up again this is a quick 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 iteration you've come to stage two you headed for the accountability, preventing the Lord allow you to be an elder in the word, and you want to die in Christ. Right. This is the full process. But let me go ahead and play this. There are two definitions. The first is the preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. Yes. The first definition is preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. Now, there's a theological definition as well, the definition number two, which says deliverance from sin and its consequences believed by Christians to be brought about by faith in Jesus Christ. 
So it'll be good, right, Brother Job? You can hear everything, right? Yes, sir. You can hear okay. me. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I figured out what happened, why that why we was getting help. So I, I eliminated that. Biblical things of that nature to see if our people, if they're in error, they're in truth. We're gonna let God's word be true in every man alive. So let's open up with Psalm chapter 91. Psalm 91 and verse 5. Psalm chapter 91 and verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence. Now, for some of you who may not know, this is prophecy of the end times, the arrow by day. It's not an actual arrow, it's the missile. It's the see, notice. Notice again, totally out of context. We ain't talking about the end, y'all. People need salvation when, y'all. Wow. They need it now. Now yeah. we are yet in our flesh. Yes, sir. So we see these false teachers with their false doctrines, totally out of context. They do not address the scriptures. As clearly stated, right there, look unto me and what be ye saved. That's the beginning. You got to look to Jesus. Right. But based on them, ain't nobody looking to Jesus. Yes. Nobody. And it says, Psalm 17 and 7, thou show thy marvelous love and kindness, O thou that savest. By thy right hand, them that put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. That's what the Lord has done for me. I can testify many a times. Amen. The Lord saved you out of situations. I mean, man, I, man no, we ain't going to get to the testimony part, y'all. We, look, we had to add an additional hour. What the Lord is saying us from, y'all? I know, bro. Tell me. Come on, man. So he ain't got about the, only about the end. You would think God is only about the end. Right. No, he's about being in very present help now. But I don't want to harp, but we got some more to go, y'all. That's why this is this is I got I said Lord showed me the one the Lord showed me this is more than one second. Anyway, so uh these guys here, man, look. That's gonna fly by there because this is prophecy of the end times. In the end times, we're not using arrows anymore. Like who's using that bow and arrow now? No. Because when the prophets saw the, uh, like in uh, 2 Peter 3 and 10 and Job, things of that nature, when they saw the end times, they saw a flying sword or a glittering sword. That's how they describe missile. But well, go ahead. Right, this is horribly low, y'all. Chapter 91, Psalm 91, verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Because with those missiles comes uh, uh, plagues that come from the dirty bombs and uh, chemical warfare, things of that nature, right? Go ahead. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday, you do. A thousand shall fall at thy side. You got to think about it. The arrow is not killing a thousand people one at one time. All right. So just to give you some edification, but keep reading. But we talk about the end, y'all. They on the same thing. I want to move on to the next topic, y'all. Because we probably bring them back on the next. But I want to move on to another biggie. Okay. I want to move on to another biggie. Born again. Born again, another critical core doctrine, y'all. Critical to salvation. My brother, my brother Joe, I mean, we we got there's various topics we can get into, right, Joe? Yes, sir. But what is primary? Salvation. Right. And born again is a part of that process. Because the book tells us. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and we are conceived in iniquity, so we need to be what? Born again. Right. Do the book express these things? Let's look at the truth, and then we're going to let you hear the lies against it. The Bible clearly states about being born again. This is the verse that made this brother walk away from the church. When I was at IOG, I saw this in the Bible. I'm like, wait a minute, is this in the book? Look what it clearly states, y'all. First Peter 1 23. Being born again, 
not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which living in the body forever. Because the word of God, huh? That, you can't call that a lie. You cannot say the you the word of God is a lie. Who is we? Who are we to say that this right here is a lie? Right. That's, man, I ain't that person. Okay. That's why when I got here with this, this is the scripture that knocked me like, whoa, I need to stop listening to flesh. I need to pay attention to this book. Yes, sir. I really do. And I saw this, that look at, not only is it in there once, that, that's Peter said that. He walked with Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How to call him a liar? Mm. Galatians 4, 19. My little children, of whom I to build. This is Paul. In birth again. You would think this ain't in the book. Mm. Until Christ be formed in you. Are you serious? I didn't know this was in the Bible, man. I actually start believing the word of God. Because when the word of God hits your mind, you do get a change of mind. Yes, I mean, come on, y'all. I mean, you know, it's like that time I told somebody, you see what we see. They're like, come on, man, that's got to be an error. Everybody know you come to the word of God, you get a change of mind. If you really faith come by hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. Word of God. Now look what Jesus said. Mama not that I say unto thee, ye must be, he didn't say ye shall be. Mm. He said, marvel not, ye must be born again. John 3 and 7. So now let's, let's move right on here. So true by the study clearly makes it known we must have a what? Change the mind. Am I right, Brother Joe? Yes, sir. Got to, man. Change from lies to what? Truth. Right. Change from holy holidays to what? Holy day. Amen. Say it. Change from stealing and committing adultery and lying and greed, just, you know, unreasonable and obnoxious greed. So wait a minute, temperance. Mm. Keeping my body under subjection. I clearly get a renewed, like I said, Psalms 51 and 10. Renewed white spirit, what? In me. Because of what? The word of God. Romans 12, 1 through 2. I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. You can't do that unless you have a change of what? Mind. And what causes you to change your mind? The word of God. Which Peter said, be born again by. That's right. Mm. That's sticking to the script. That's believing the teachings of the Bible and not the false teachings of a false prophet. Mm. Can I read this John 5 and 1? Yes, sir. Whosoever believed that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Mm. And everyone that loveth him and begat love of him is begotten of him. Yes. So, hey man, if he called you, you born again. Yes. You born of God. That's yes. it. You know what? I'm not getting around that. How can he, he call you and you not be born again? It's impossible. It's impossible. And that, did you read that uh First down two, go first down two and uh 29. Yes, okay. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Born of him, y'all. Yes, hey. sir. And we do righteousness now. Yeah, so we doing righteousness what now? Because of the word of God. Which makes us born again of who? God. Sir. But look at 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 because we're moving right along. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Is that born again, y'all? Come on. I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, you know, I don't claim to be the wisest knife in the drawer. 
the sharpest knife in the drawer. But I still believe in reading this book. Always have been. Brother Joe, I come out here with book. He come out with book. Hey, we, we believe in book. We got brothers on the dialogue table that believe in this book. Yes, sir. We with the brothers that believe in this book. We on the book side. Mm. Joe been on my side, child, please. I ain't on his side. We on, on the low side. side. <laughs> <laughs> and it said, therefore, if any man Right. Any man. But look, here we go. There you go. Here's the error. Do y'all see that? I mean, anytime I saw somebody like that, they're like, whoa. Come on, man. He he really ain't that. I mean, that that's adding to the scriptures. It's not a change in mind. That's not in the scripts. Bruh. He said, don't add one job or one tittle. That's right. That's adding, bro. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Again, a change in body, not in mind. That's not written. That is a bald faced lie. Based on what we just read in the scriptures, y'all, in the scriptures. Clearly. Now, let me get to, to this. Let me get to this piece right here. Because what we're going to look at in here, flat out, y'all, flat out a flat out opposition of what you read, man. Come on, I'm gonna believe in what I read. That's why I'm like, uh, when you read that, out, brother, if you show me where it's red, we good, we go with it. But let's go here and listen to this, y'all. Not a change in mind. Go on again. A change in body, not a change in mind. I hear people saying all the time, well, since I've been born again, or when I became, or when I became born again. And I'm looking at these people, and they're still flesh and blood, and they are still getting old and they're going to die. Because when you're born again, sisters and brothers, you're born from one thing to another. How did you get into man's family? You were born into man's family. So now if you're going to get into God's family, you have to be born into it. So being that you have been born once, when you get in, in order to get in God's family, you have to be born again. That's why I said that. But still, we're going to go and we're going to look at this. We're going to go into St. John, the third chapter. We're going to take our time and we're going to examine this, sisters and brothers. Because you have too many people running around to thinking that they have been born again. And they haven't even been conceived. Because if they had, they would know better. And it started at book. I should read from the book of Psalms. I'm going to turn this over to this time. I'm going to over to our teacher and our reader. Today's teacher from Brady Bay. Today's reader. All right. Now, this time from another Pro no, they program. Listen to this, y'all. in the Christian community, that when you come to the word, people say they're born with him. Wait a minute. Yeah. Ain't that what the book said? Right there? That one brother tell me. Man, it's right there. It's right there, bro. Mm -hmm. Being born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's what the book said. Mm -hmm. And he just said, let me back that up. He just said, what? And, uh, but it, it's not in coincide with the Bible. You won't see it in the Bible says about who was born again because this is the one subject that you have been mistaught. And a lot of people walking around thinking they're born again and they ain't really being born for the Christian. 
Wow. If you don't, if you come, if you don't, if you cut, I play it, I play it again. We play this because I know it's a little hard to hear this. Anyway, so we see false teachers with their false doctrines flat out. And let's go to our last place. I want to move right along here. Because clearly, this is an error against 1 Peter 23rd chapter, against Galatians 4.19. Flat out. Water baptism. Water baptism, y'all. You got blasphemy. This is critical to salvation. Right there in 1 Peter 3 and 20 through 21. We read it earlier. Water baptism saves, but you have I do I see boys right there. Why the baptism doesn't save us? But the Bible says it does. Who on the book side? I am, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Simon, you on the book side? I'm yeah. so I'm on the book side. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Save from Satan gospel. <laughs> That's right. That's why I say from these false teachers and false right. preachers. Yes. And they false doctrines. Yes. Because look, he that believed, even Jesus told us in Mark 16 and 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now we understand why Jesus said that. And we understand being baptized by the word spirit because we know the word is water. It's symbolic in the analogy of water. We understand your mind getting hit. But you got to consummate that. It's like, like I'm saying to my brother, it's almost like me sitting up and telling y'all, everybody around me, hey, I love you, Rika. Rika is so wonderful. And somebody come up and, yeah, I'm a, no, I just love just She's so beautiful. And, oh, I just love her. There. And then somebody said, have you married her yet? And I'm like, no. Uh, whoa. Uh, bro. You say you love her, but why ain't you marrying her? Uh, well, uh, uh, dude, you got to consummate. Mm. You hear the word of God. You believe the word of God. You got to break water. Mm. Just like a newborn babe, they break water. See, the Lord showed you physical, that which is physical. Or flesh, and he show you what got to happen spiritually. So we hit that. We come out of physical water. When I came out, my mother's woman, all y'all too, we broke water. That's right. So for that second birth, you got to break water. What again? That's why it's written being birth again. That's right. No, no, no. You got these brothers here that say water baptism does not doesn't save us. Make it plain, brother. So I'm like, who are we gonna listen to? Now, I, my brother Joe helped me out with this. Let's go to that Luke 7 right quick. That Luke 7 in, uh, I believe. Because these guys, these are the fringe boys. These are purple. I ain't going to be, um, the, the scripture is doing enough damage to them. This is Jesus that they call in the life when they say water baptism doesn't say. And Jesus said, he that believeth in the baptized shall be saved. Because when you hit that water, it does now save you. Because it's the answering of the conscience you have gone from the calling to now, you have made the consummation to the covenant. Right. 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 But when you reject the back, water baptism, what's that? Luke 7 and uh, 7 and 36. I think Luke 7 and 36. They reject the council. When you reject the baptism, this is what you're doing. Luke 7. No, it's not in the 30s. Hold on. Right, because just wait. <coughs> yeah, 30. Luke 7 and 30. Okay. Look, oh, sorry, 29 and 30. We said Luke 7, verse 29 and 30. Luke 7, 29. Luke. Chapter 7 and verse 29. 
And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. Mm -hmm. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves being not baptized of him. Wow. Wow. So when you reject, so what was the Pharisees wearing, y'all? Weren't they wearing Pharisees? Yeah. Then they had their beautiful beards. Then they had they, they, they <laughs> it was all garbed up. That's what we're looking at in I do I see. You getting a snapshot of what was back there against Jesus, rejecting the counsel, the Pharisees and the lawyers, rejecting the counsel of God against himself, not being what baptized of them. So they would tell you water baptism doesn't save us. Let's get to that place. Let's play that, y'all. I'm like, you know what, bruh? Are you serious? But you got these guys, millions and millions of these, hundreds of thousands of these guys following behind you, y'all. Mm -hmm. Following this guy. You're your sins. You, they still in their sins, y'all. Mm -hmm. So let's get to, let me pull this up, y'all. I'm like, wow. 18 minutes with Captain Joel. Yeah! Like, wow, bro. So you talking to me, me against the uh, uh, baptism. You trying to put me against the counsel of God. So let me pull it up. I got, I got that thingy. Hold on, y'all. Equal op opportunities, y'all. Equal, I'm not a respecter of person. We're going to point out the lies. Flat out. Here we go. That's how they come up. So, here we go. Hold on. Repentance, read. So that the Jews might be spiritually prepared. Hold on. Too far. How we're going over? It's baptism. But I want this up. This up. So, do we want to baptize today? Does baptism save you? We're going to show you through the scriptures and the spirit of the Most High that there's two different baptisms. John the Baptist baptism and the baptism of Christ. Read the definition of baptism. The Zion Bible Dictionary. Baptism. The word baptizo in Jewish usage first appears in the Mosaic laws of purification. Mm -hmm. So baptizo, baptism, which comes from the Jewish word baptizo, appears in the Jewish law in the Mosaic. Read. Where it means washing or cleansing. And so it comes from the purification law. It comes from the purification law, which means washing or cleansing. That's where John the Baptist got the idea of baptism from. Read on. Jews baptized proselytes. Uh huh. John's baptism was connected with repentance. So John's baptism, which extends from the Jewish purification law, was connected with repentance. Read. So that the Jews might be spiritually prepared to recognize and receive the Messiah. Read. And it deferred from the baptism of Jesus. So it deferred. It deferred. It differentiated from the baptism of Jesus. So there was two different types of baptism. Let's get Acts chapter 19, verse 2 now. So to show you, because a lot of people still believe in this amount of time. In a Christian church, you got the Baptist church. We're so doctrine and belief system is based upon water baptism. That water baptism save you. But the scripture says otherwise. I mean, Hold on. I want to, again, point out. Notice they focus is strictly on the obvious errors against the book. Notes again, the not the, the crafty handling of the word of God, crafty because they're picking on people that really ain't in the truth. I mean, seriously, we're gonna get that, y'all. It's, it's, it's but this again, false teachers teaching against plain scripture. That's why I have it there. And if they went on their way, they came to a certain water. This is Acts 8 and 36 to 38. Notice they came to a certain water. So the church, after Jesus' death from resurrection, right. they did water baptism. Right. Come because on, man. They now say. Mm. That's scripture. Right. Scripture. But this guy, he finished now. He got a craft in this. He got that devilish wisdom Matter of fact, let me read something before we continue. 
because uh, you got some people out there, man, you shouldn't be doing this. Let's go to Isaiah 48, 1 through 2, right quick. Out of the 48th chapter, Brother Joel, we're going to read verses 1 through 2. All right. And this is what we've been pointing out all throughout this lesson. Out of the 48th chapter. I think we're going to finish up on this water baptism and we save the rest from next week. Okay. Isaiah 48 and 1. Mm -hmm. Hear ye this, O house of Israel. Forgive me. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob which are called by my name of Israel and are come forth out of the water of Judah, mm -hmm. which swear by the name of the Lord and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth, nor in righteousness. Ain't that what we've been looking at, y'all? Right. Way too much of, man. That's just ridiculous. This, you know. It's really, yeah, that's a bad look, bro. That's a bad look. Look, read verse two. For they call themselves of the holy city and stay themselves upon the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. Now let's go to 2 Timothy and look at Paul. He going to call out by name. He going to call the people out. Some of some these false teachers out. 2 Timothy. 2, 15 to verse 19. Yeah, I want to get this out before we finish this off. 2 Timothy 2, 15 to 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. 15 to 19. Oh, 15, verse 15. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes, sir. But shine profane and but but shine profane and vain babblings increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat, and their word will eat as doeth a canker. Of whom is Herminius and Philtius, uh -huh. who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, overthrow the faith of some. Now look, Paul is calling out these two guys, Herminius and Philtius, saying, who concerning the truth have erred, saying, and Paul states the doctrine. Just as what I've done, what we've done, we showed overthrow people's faith concerning saved, right. overthrow people's faith concerning what? Born again, overthrow people's faith concerning water baptism. I ain't doing nothing that this book ain't said I couldn't do. Look like it right there. It's right there. Let's go and get another witness. Second John, one and nine. Now, I'm willing to sit down at the table and go into, if brothers want to debate this, these three topics we're going to present it, I ain't got no problem with that. But let's make sure we, we are on the side of the book before we go there. Because the book going to fall. Jacob ain't going to fall. Job ain't going to fall. Hey, man, the Lord going to fall on you. But look, John 1 and 9. Second, sorry, second John 1 and 9. Mr. Second John. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on. No, third John. Third John. My bad. Oh. Third John 1 and 9. Read. Third John 1 and 9. I wrote unto the church that the that the tree the Theotrephus, mm -hmm. who loveth to have preeminence among them, mm. receive us not. Now look, love to have preeminence among the church. Oh, 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 o
Oh, damn, you the bitch. Oh, no. I've never, never seen that. that. Man, I never seen that. This they don't want to have a conversation because they know if you come there, you're gonna take that madness out of the people here. Yes. So they don't want to appear in front of nobody that has the understanding and the knowledge to deal with their madness. Exactly. That's why UIC didn't put me on. I, I uh, trust and believe who's right there on that Las Vegas Boulevard. I was expecting to see IUIC versus a Bible Christian. That was 2015. What year is this now? 2022? No. Ain't seen one. Yeah, right. Hmm. Read verse 10. Verse 10. Wherefore, well, if I come, I remember his deeds which he doeth, pratting against us with malicious words and not contend therewith. What? Neither do if he himself receive the brethren, but forbiddeth them that would and cast them out of the church. Oh, Child, please. You know that. You know that. Come on, y'all. You know that. Come on, y'all. I haven't seen brothers get. I'm like, you know oh, what? Oh, my gosh. You know what? What can we say, man? That's that's what the book said. Happens. Mandarin. Bro, I'm, I ain't never seen this scripture like this in this light. You know, I read, I read it, yeah. and I read it, and I read it, but, but this conversation brought this up. I never seen this light on this script. Like this dude had an issue with the brethren, but wouldn't face them. Right. But let's go to verse 11 and 12. Okay. <clears throat> uh, St. John, I mean, Third John chapter one, verse eleven. Mm -hmm. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God. Yes. But he that doeth evil have not seen God. Mm -hmm. Demetrius have a good report of all men and of truth itself. Mm -hmm. Yet we also bear. Record Record and ye know that our record is true. Boom. So we are open to sitting down with brothers that go say, Look, I'm no longer gonna follow the evil. That's against born again. That's against Satan. That tell us we are not to be baptized, water baptists. Mm. So let me finish this this a little more of this because we got this is part one. In yeah. Acts chapter 19, verse 2. The book of Acts chapter 19, verse 2. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? So he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe in Christ? Read. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. So they said, Hey, we think the Holy Ghost is going to. No, 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 no. no. This Holy Ghost is talking about the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of understanding, of wisdom being expounded on you once you keep the laws and the faith of Christ. Read on. Verse 3. And he said unto them, until what then were you baptized? So they said, wait a minute. We have not heard whether it be a Holy Ghost. So they said unto them, then what then were, uh, were you baptized? Read. And they said unto John's baptism. And they said unto John's baptism, which was based upon water baptism. Read. Then said, Lord, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance. Saying unto the people, so John barely baptized to the baptism of repentance unto water with water. Read that they should believe on him which should come after him that is on Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Was this water baptism? No, because why? There's a different wow. Let's go to Acts 10, verse 45 and 48. <laughs> Come on, oh, bro. Right. That would have been an easy kill, bro. At risk, man. They, yeah, they pick, and, they pick and choose their fights, too. Yes. That would have been a real easy kill. He wouldn't have walked away from the table. With, he would have had a whole lot of dumb look. You know, exactly. Or that devil would have left him, and he would right. have had a fresh start. Yeah. If he was um, going up against a Bible question. And I ain't talking about me. No. Just me. Hmm. 
man, that's an easy kill. That that man, he ran right into the sword. Yeah, he did. <laughs> to, uh, Acts 10, 45 to 48. Read that, Israel. Read that. That's one of the people to hear them words. Okay. Acts 10, verse 45. And they of the circumcision believed were astonished. And many came with Peter because the that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid what? Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Are you serious, bro? So that water baptism is required? Bro, you, you was eating lunch. You put your sword down so you can eat your lunch, and this dude ran on the sword. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Flat out. But you got thousands and thousands of brothers following that type of teaching. I know. Wow. That's sad. That's it's See, so funny what it's sad. I know. It, it's really, I know. We're trying to, you know, just pray the Lord would give them a spirit of repentance and deliver and save some of them. That they would get baptized, water baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as we be, as well as we? Yes. And, the, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Yes. And prayed they him to tarry certain. Days. Yes. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So uh, we got we got a brother comment. Uh can, you said, can I read it? Oh uh, yeah, read Brother Evans' comment. Hold on. I, hold on. Can Joe read it? Can Joe, can you read Brother Evans' comment, Israel? Um, can you read it, Ray? You got it, don't you? Brother Evans. Yeah. Sister Betty's and then Brother Evans. Sister Betty's and then brother and then brother uh Evans. Okay, read that out for us, sis. No, no, sister. The question. Sister Betty said. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, let me scroll up on my, on my computer. Okay, because I think she not getting it on this line. Yeah, Let's... hold on. Yeah, you got it? You see it? Mm -hmm. Hold on. I think we got it on this end. Miss, Miss Sister Betty Tyler said, Mm -hmm. How are you going to baptize someone without some water? And then, and, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so she said, how are you going to baptize anybody without water? That's the first question. And then the other right. one is this. What is it? Oh, Israel, <laughs> he said they baptize by air. <laughs> Stop. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and drying them. I guess he's going to dry clean them, huh? Okay. And then Chosen Josie said, uh, Sister Betty, I'm curious to know how they're how they're doing such a thing without water. See, they don't. And that's what's scary. they don't. That's what's so scary. Mm. That's what's so scary. So we're gonna uh end it right here because we got two parts of this. That's why the Lord showed me, bro. This ain't no one set. You got you got hooked this up in two parts. Then you get to the first day preaching. So we're going to come back to this, y'all. We're going to come back next Sabbath. Stay tuned. Like I stated, any brothers from any of these ministries want to sit down at the table and we go over this, uh, over these three primary. We talking critical. We ain't talking about 2300 days of Daniels, how long the tribulation is, you know, all these other things that are outside of the core foundation. Of salvation. That's why critical core doctrine is salvation. We are in the business of saving souls. It said, receive the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. That's what that's what we are. That's right. That's what the dialogue table is about. Brothers come to that table. We know you about salvation. You ain't no yes man. You a book man. <laughs> you about this. You on the book side. Sir, yeah. and I'd like to thank my brother Job. I hope he can come back for, for part two of this. Yeah, and uh, hey man, we hey, look, 
Well, we have presented and laid it all out. We're going to pick it up in part two next week. And we're going to continue this train running down. We got because there's far more that has been taught in error and in arrogance and in sin and in causing our people to err mm. in serving God. That's what's so dangerous about a false prophet. Yeah. That's why we had this false prophet, the series. Okay. And well, I'm, I'm blind, blind at that. Yeah. yeah, amen, Israel. Any last, you got something to say, Brother Joe? I, I, you know, I respect you too, Israel. Well, one thing I just want to comment off of, you know, the, uh, this brother here, Captain Joel, is uh, it, it's just like, where was you going with that? That's the IUC, no, that's the I, uh, uh, Institute of Higher Knowledge or something like that. That's, yeah. the, I, that's, that's them. That's who they out of because that's their doctrine. They right. talked that first. So UIC oh. broke off from them because they got a lot of that madness. Oh. Listening at this, listening at this eel, yeah. you can hear it. You see, so, and then he going to sit up there and go in, I dare you to go in and ask the 10th chapter. Triple dare you. And then go and say, you know, that uh, they heard the gift of the Holy Ghost and so forth. Right? Right. They sure did. And they were baptized with water in the name of Jesus. And I do hope my brothers heard that, that the Pharisees yes. forsook their own counsel, counsel. being well, I, not baptized. baptized. And when I last checked, Jesus baptized also. Yes. Him and John was both baptizing at the same time. So now you're going to say Jesus didn't know what he was doing. Mm. You know, mm. hey, bro, great precept. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, it reminds me a lot of back in the, we sit back in the churches and we call ourselves being slick. Yeah, you sit over there, brother. Yeah, yeah. You sit over that. Yeah, yeah. Know who we got. yeah, yeah, right until the book opened up. <laughs> that's right. So, hey man, that's that's this thing is wonderful. And now, uh, God willing, we live. Um, I really like to take part in that next piece, too. Yes, sir. Thank yes, you. sir. Yes, sir. So, with that being said, we close out part one. I started, like I said, I started to do about the apostles and everything, but I saw so much false doctrine. Please forgive me, y'all. But I was like, man, I cannot do this doctrine of the false prophets and false teachers in one setting. So I had to bump out. So for the next time we come around to this series, then I'll bring out, I'll bring out the other part that I started to go into. So this is only part one of three. Because we're going to take it out to the end of or the last Sabbath of this month. So I hope you guys uh, got some understanding and it was edifying for the defense of the faith, y'all. Right. Amen. Okay. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. So with that being said, we want to get into our announcements right quick. Uh, uh, we do have, let me bring up uh, my brother. Uh, let me bring my stuff up for because uh, we have a program coming on tomorrow that we're, uh, we're opening up with tomorrow. Let me bring it up here make sure I get my brother uh, squared away here. Uh, it's entitled the, uh, well, let me bring it up here. We will be uh, sharing my desktop here. If everyone can see that, we will be having our Bible Truth Hour tomorrow, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It will be hosted by the Sound of Living Waters and the BCLG. And this platform, we will have guests, you know, brothers that's on the side of the book. You're on the book side, you are well. Okay, we don't care what color, right, Brother Joe? Hey, bro, the, the, the priesthood has no color to it, not the exactly. black. No it lineage. Based on lineage. No lineage. No None. lineage. Missed that. Uh, okay. About righteousness. That's right. Righteousness. you on the book side, you're welcome. Come on now. The whole book side, not half a book now. But you got people, I'm on the Old Testament side. 
Mm. Sorry about that. You on the New Testament side? Sorry about that. You on both sides of the book? You will talk about it. Yes, sir. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. <laughs> yes, sir. So uh, uh, that being said, uh, hey, tithes and offerings, hey, we appreciate your support and everything. And uh, we want to just continue this, uh, to support. Uh, thank you, BCOG members. Also, our question and answer will be open up immediately following this. We will be staying in Zoom uh, immediately following this and to transition over to our Q&A session, which last Sabbath we had a ball, y'all. We like, wow. And it's new and the way we're doing it with the categories and everything. 24 categories, Israel. 24. And it's almost like a Russian roulette. But you can also you know, swap out the question that we come up with under that category with a category of or a question of your own. So we provided a variety. We've seen how all the other question and answers are conducted, but we said, well, we want to give people a variety and a choice so that they can be edified and built up in God, not in us. Because it's all about preaching this book, living this book, teaching this book, and doing what the book said, and reading what the book said, and believing what the book said, and achieving what the book said, because it said, in Christ, we can do all things that strengthen us, y'all. And he is called the word of God. Amen. So with that being said, honey, you, you got to be ready. Go ahead and uh, oh, and uh, happy Saturday uh, AM show up. Damn, I'm going to put the promo up there. Well, hey, we want to also invite you. I know I don't have the promo. I forgot to add that in there. Please forgive me, honey. Hey, and uh, we welcome you to come out uh, every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Pacific, and 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, okay? So uh, with that being said, um, we got our announcer ready for it. Yes. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, everyone. Today is September 10th, 2022. We'd like to thank all who was able to join us on uh, Facebook. We know that we usually stream on YouTube, but because of the nature of the lesson, uh, we were able to only stream on Facebook, but we will upload the lesson on YouTube uh, today. And we want to also uh, thank Brother Job Israel for being our guest today. Yes, yes. Read and pray God. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. And I know his yes. lovely wife was right beside him, Ray, and helping. So <laughs> praise God for you too, sis. Uh, in Jesus' name, as Brother uh, Jacob mentioned, the Bible Truth Hour on tomorrow, Sunday, September 11th. That's actually uh, 9 11, ain't that Sunday? September 11th, tomorrow at um, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, for the Bible Truth Hour with Sounds of Living Water and uh, BCOG um, as they will be conducting lesson and dialogue talk on tomorrow. Praise God for that new improved program. Also um, on our prayer list, this is our list that we have for uh, individuals who are sick in the hospital or needing prayer for general prayers, matters of health or employment and things of that nature. And then we have our bereaved list those who are seeking comfort from the Lord for um, the loss of a loved one or friend. So on our sick list, we still have Deshaun Foster, the young man who's been in the hospital for almost a year now um, with the autoimmune uh, disease, still keeping him in our prayers, guys. He's slowly but surely getting better, um, but he is not yet released. So he's still on our sick list and on our Prayer, general prayer, we have our own uh, Sean Young and Dylan, who was today, early this morning, uh, in a car accident, but the Lord uh, pulled them through. So let's give the Lord a hand praise for that. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And somebody want to tell me God will save us the harm? Okay. Or was that our harm? You we were saving God. How about that? My son, today, our son, saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the destruction mm -hmm. his very life him and his uh, uh friend but mm -hmm. uh, we want to put them on a prayer list brother lenny uh cousin linda Ware, matters of health we have henry curries which is our uh boot camp coach his son yeah. uh is recuperating from surgery which will be by there today yeah. uh for prayer for him and uh comfort for his son uh brother sam brown brother sam gardner marianne jackson matters of health uh, Tanya Roper and Tawana, all three of these uh, sisters is needing prayer for matters of health. Okay. Sister Cheryl Lane and family 
and Lola Rogers, which is Sabbath little gymnast, you know, uh, her friend, gymnast friend, needing prayer for her foot and everything. Mm -hmm. She'll be seeing the doctor next week. So when we hear these things, we put the people names on the list for prayer. Now on our bereaved list, we have the Carson family, the passing of the husband, or Odell Sr., and then the Posh family, passing of their mother, and then the Lacey family, the passing of uh, Pendleton. Um, his first name, Danny Pendleton, Darian, Danny Pendleton. So we have two praise reports. During the week, uh, Brother Jacob and I received uh, a prayer request for Sandy Foss who was needing a uh, surgery on Friday. And so we received the text on Thursday. Surgery was Friday and then she's at home now recuperating. So Amen. look at God in that situation. Amen. In and out. Amen. <laughs> and also the Darhall family who's been on our prayer list since April 30th. Mm. April 30th of an unforeseen accident that the doctors was not expecting for this member of this Dar Hall family to even come through. Mm. I mean, it was a like a skull type injury. Mm. Had to come in, put it back in, take it out. And I just spoke with one of the members of the family and showed me that this member was walking around near the pool. Wow. Out of the hospital, walking around what doing do <laughs> Wow. I was in instant tears. <laughs> And this individual family member happens to believe in things all universe, if you know what I mean. So okay. it That's was right. a, a proof of faith yeah. and something. Got to acknowledge who that was and okay. is. And okay. eventually I get the opportunity to, to talk with uh, her regarding that. But she showed me proof of recovery. And he will be celebrating his birthday this weekend. Mm. along with her their birthdays is close together wow. so she's having a staying alive party yeah, staying alive. wow so let's get down in here praise for that those two praise for the yes, yeah so is. these concludes the uh prayer list and the announcements for september 10th 2022 amen amen so that being said again praise god for those who join us we will be switching over to our q a meeting following this release uh I got my, let's see if I got my brother Joe back. I'll go ahead and close this out, Israel. Or well, if you can close this out, you open this up, Israel. I want my guests to go ahead and close this out. Amen. So if you can close this out with a reading, Israel. Okay, with a reading of the scripts? Yeah, yeah. Something in Psalms 119. Because, you know, that's like our, our that's a BCOG all time favorite hit, though. <laughs> anyway, dang. Well, anyway. For the BCOG. Bible yeah. Christians of God. Yes. Psalms <laughs> so 119 and anywhere between 101 and 176. Yes, sir. Uh, let me find something. Okay. And right here. Hold thou me up. And I Hold shall pass. Forgive me. Forgive me. I forgot. Okay, forgive me. Hold thou me up. Hold, Hold thou me up. up. I shall be safe. I, I shall, shall be safe. safe. Amen. I will have respect. I will, will have respect. Unto thy statutes continually. Unto thy statutes continually. Thou hast trodden. Thou hast trodden. Down, down, down all them that err. Down all them that err. From thy statutes. From thy statutes. For their deceit is falsehood. But their deceit is falsehood. Thou put us away all the wicked. Thou put us away all the wicked. Of the earth like dross. Of the earth like dross. Therefore I love thy testimonies. Therefore I love thy testimonies. Amen. I read Amen. Psalms 119 verses 117 to 119. May the Lord add a blessing and an uh, and a, and a increasing of the hearing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And praise, the Lord. Praise, the Lord. praise 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 the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord, praise God, the Lord God, God of Israel. Israel.
the Alpha, the Alpha, the Omega, the, Omega, the, Omega, the, beginning, the beginning, and the end, and the end, and our yeah. High Priest, and our High Priest in heaven, in heaven. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. We pray. We pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Hey, right, God. Hey. hey, you invited to hang around for the Q&A if you want, man. 